Hey everyone, I'm Mitch Galton, also Director of Sales here at Segre, and I'll be in the background today as Dr. Smaz Zabayed, our Chief Tissue Culture Officer, explores the ins and outs of tissue culture production. Smaz has over 25 years of expertise in the tissue culture industry, and he's the mastermind behind our plant lit production efforts in Canada. Today, he'll be going through the overall process of tissue culture initiation, multiplication, and acclimation of tissue culture cannabis plantlets. We'll also review the various methods of tissue culture production, including explant multiplication methods, which we use here at Segre. Before we're getting started, I want to lay out a quick timeline and structure for the webinar. Small will begin by walking us through a presentation for around 30 minutes, after which we'll have a live Q&A period. If you look at the bottom of your screen, there's a tab with Q&A written on it. Just toss any questions in there as we go, and we'll get through them all at the end. We'll also be circulating a recorded copy of Small's presentation following the webinar, so don't worry if you miss any details along the way. Now, without further ado, it's my pleasure to introduce you all to Dr. Small Zabayad. Thank you, uh, Mitch and uh, uh, Carson, to introduce um, Segra and myself. Um, um, uh, and thank you, everybody, to attending this um, webinar. Um, the first slide I want to start with some of the R&D work at Segra we are conducting currently, and we did um, since we started in these facilities. <clears throat> We have a joint project on uh, with the Simon Fraser University at British Columbia to conduct the automating, automate our uh, process and systems. Also, we have a agronomy um, the, um, uh, a collaborative work with UBC with the MyTech uh, research project. So we are conducting various research to improve our um, uh, our tissue culture as well as uh, collecting data for our agronomy and also to, to improve the uh, process by automating a lot of um, systems during the uh, process of tissue culture. Um, so today, basically, I'm going to discuss about um, what is plant tissue culture, uh, the challenge with the traditional vegetative propagation methods, especially, especially I want to emphasize in cannabis area, uh, multiplication technique, which exists in uh, different areas of tissue culture, commercial tissue culture process in agriculture and horticulture process, and photo-autotrophic tissue culture system and its possibility um, in, in the cannabis industry for, for tissue culture, Segra tissue culture technologies, what we are currently using and what we can do in future. <clears throat> let's, let's start with uh, plant tissue culture. What is plant tissue culture? It's actually a vegetative plant propagation method uh, where <clears throat> rather than using the uh, prop, um, uh, greenhouse or outer environment, we actually use this under a controlled sterile environment, uh, which is with ar artificial nutrients and growth regulator, we control the growth and um, and the production ability of the plants so that as we emphasize them to um, produce uh, or multiply the multiply as we require rather than growing the plants uh, that um, the bigger size is. So the plants are normally um, um, always true to type. Um, they are pathogen free, disease free, um, and uh, tissue culture is the only possible way of vegetative propagation where you can actually scale up the process. So if you require um, thousands or millions of plants uh, through vegetative propagation, this is the only way you can do. So uh, coming back to uh, the existing um, uh, industries like agriculture and horticulture, actually ag agriculture and horticulture industry um, currently using this modern technology for their global supplies of, um, of, of uh, uh, fruits, for, for example, uh, strawberry, raspberry, uh, banana, um, blackberries, uh, those are uh, all from uh, so tissue culture for horticulture industry, for example, orchids, uh, rhododendron, azalea, ornamental grass, ferns, they are well-established tissue culture technology already worldwide we are using. However, in the cannabis industry, I'm going to explain next two slides. We are, we are far behind still in the adopting this technology, but we are almost there. Um, what is, let's go back and see what the, uh, uh, how the cannabis industry uh, propagating to um, for their for their own demand. So um, current method is mostly using by um, by cuttings. That's the vegetative propagation, um, where almost ten percent of of their production facility occupied by the uh, mother stock plants, where you require to grow the plants, um, um, and then take the cuttings out of this. So when the clones go to the uh, high humid condition in, in a chamber where you induce the uh, roots formation, and eventually th those rooted transplanted move to the pro production facility to further growing and, and to, to the production. 
So um, this is the current method of production. I'm going to explain what is the um, uh, what is the issues on this uh, these techniques. But before going there, I um yeah. So the, let's discuss this part first. Um, what is happening in when you grow a mother plant in a in a high humid condition? So there is a, always the possibility of um, a bacteria or fungal spores um, then that, that they landed on the plant's surface and then can cause some of these are pathogenic, then can cause the disease and things. These bacteria uh, or, the, uh, or the fungal spores can carry it on to the next step for when we produce the clo uh, clones. And then when they rooted, and then some of these have to move to the main production facilities where, um, and then they, they, with this humid environment and very really good for, for this kind of um, uh, microbes to multiply. And then as a result, we got the crop loss. It's very common um, in, in current cannabis industries. Mm. We have seen number of uh, facilities has been shut down uh, and due to crop lo losses. Um, other issues is the scaling up. Let's go back. Um, I'm going to the example, giving the example in California. California is one of the largest um, cannabis production um, 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 states um, in US and compared with Canada, it's almost the same size. Um, so if we um, discuss how the cannabis industry started in California, it's go back to like 2005, the left side picture showing that that time the regulation was number of plants you are allowed to grow. So each grower allowed to only hundred of plants. So how they cope with this, they, they use, um, they make the plants giant size um, and then low planting density. As a, as a result, they were not required a, a large number of plants. So that's how it's established. So hundred plants for a grower they can do by cutting. There is no requirement for the tissue culture. However, the regulation has been changed last uh, 15, 10, 15 years. Now, it's no longer the number of plants. Currently, the way it works is the canopy area. So, and then the growers um, change their uh, way of producing plants. They, they uh, do the higher plant density, smaller plants, and then they produce more flowers this way. So here is the thing is that the existing technology for 100 plants already established for cloning is not transit, uh, transit to the current demand. So they are still doing the cloning. However, here is the possibility of tissue culture technology um, uh, come and should take over like the existing agriculture and horticulture industry. Um, uh, so uh, let's talk a little bit about how the plant tissue cultures work. In, in, the, in the industry of plant tissue culture, when we receive a plant from a, uh, from a mother plant, we usually take the cuttings, take the meristem culture. What is meristem culture? I'm going to explain a little bit uh, in a minute, but let's go ahead and discuss the uh, other steps. In the step two, what we do is the surface sterilization. Um, uh, when uh, what the surface sterilization do is cleaning the bacteria and the fungal spores. Um, also, due to meristem cultures, we also get rid of virus. Um, so it's a disease-free, pathogen-free, clean plants. And in that stage is either we can store the plants uh, or tissue tissues in our storing media. Whenever we need, we can bring it to the multiplication or we can straight go to the multiplication stages. So we can multiply the plants according to our demand. Um, it can go to thousands of plants or millions of plants if, if required. From there, uh, if, if we have enough stock, we can then uh, batch wise, we can transfer to the rooting phase. We call it in vitro rooting or stage three. From stage three, it can go to stage four where do, do we acclimatize in the outer environment. Um, from um, this stage, either stage three or stage four, we can deliver the plants to our clients. That is the nursery or a licensed producer. So um, this is the uh, regular procedure for uh, tissue culture. In at Sagra facilities, we actually validated the cannabis plant tissue culture process. What we do when we receive a plant for our clients, um, we initiate those. Once the plants arrive in our um, facility, immediately we do the DNA fingerprinting in our facility. We store that, that DNA fingerprint in our library. Um, the, when the initiation done, we, we uh, transfer. So initiation again is, um, I'm explaining, is cleaning the plants or get 
rid of all bacteria, virus, um, uh, or fungal uh, fungus. And so with clean plants, and then they have go through some uh, some changes, physiological changes, and they, they change to the multiplication multiplication phase. We call it stage two. In the stage two. Uh, they multiply once we require the uh, amount of stock established. For example, if a client require, um, uh, say, uh, uh, 10,000 plants um, uh, monthly, so what we need just two to uh, 3,000 plants to stock. So one transfer, they can be 9,000, another transfer, they can be 27,000. So we keep the 3,000 stock, rest of the plants go to the stage three. That's, we call it rooting. From rooting um, is required three to four weeks. When the plants are rooted, either we can ship it by um, by um, uh, stage three uh, phases, or you can transfer to the stage four, and and, um, and plants can ship to the clients in the stage four status. So when before sending to the, our clients, we also do the DNA fingerprinting, either in stage three or stage four, um, and we match with our initial. Um, 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 initial finger, fingerprinting data, and we make sure it's exactly the same plants have been um, sent to our clients. Now, during the um, malnutrition phase, stage two, uh, depend on the batch size, we usually two to three months, every two to three months, we do the auditing. Independent um, uh, auditors come, collect the plants uh, samples, uh, go to the lab, do the DNA fingerprinting, make sure it's, the, uh, it's, it's matching with the, um, with the original samples. The reason is it's not only for mixing possible human error or things, it could be sumacnolar variation. Uh, what is sumacnolar variation is, um, is, a, is kind of a mutation. Sometimes it's happening in plant tissue culture. In our cases, in, in SAGRA facilities, we actually, um, do our, uh, the way we proceed the tissue culture proceed, uh, process, there should not have any sumacnolar variation. Even there is some, we can actually track those, um, those uh, plants which, which mutated and we can separate those uh, through the DNA fingerprinting um, and then we isolate and, uh, and destroy those plants and we can either reinitiate or the clean plants which still exist in our lab, we can multiply those only. So this is a good procedure we established uh, where we can we can separate all kind of mutation and any possible mixing and everything. So and to ensure that clients are receiving the best plant uh, possible and that is matched with their original sample they're sending. So um, let's discuss how in general the plant tissue culture works. Um, the um, the um, tissue culture technology using worldwide in agriculture and horticulture industry um, is generally regulated with four different stages. Stage um, zero, zero is when we get the donor plants. Again, in our facility, we do the DNA fingerprinting in this, uh, this uh, stage. Um, stage one is the in vitro establishment where, where we actually do the, all the surface um, sterilization, uh, cleaning the plants, take the meristem out of these uh, tissues, and then they are inoculated into the growing media, initiation uh, media. And these days we call this uh, uh, in vitro environment, uh, call this in vitro plants, and then um, they are um, generally clean from any bacteria, virus, uh, or, or uh, fungal, fungus, and they are pathogen free. Um, next step is the step stage two, where is multiplication. Again, as I explained before, they are um, uh, multiplying here, either stage um, two times two, three, four, five, um, up to 20 or any anything. Some grasses we saw is 20 times uh, multiplication. We saw in on a vertical industry, some fruits can produce, um, uh, 15 to 20 times multiplication in a month. So this is that um, uh, most important stage in tissue culture industry, which I'm going to explain a little bit um, uh, uh, details of the multiplication tech technology currently available in the, in the area of plant tissue culture in next few slides. But before going there, uh, when the multiplication or stocks are established, then we, uh, we send it for elongation. Some plants require some elongated uh, taller plants, and then we send it the rooting or stage three. After stage three is the stage four or the acclimatization, where the ex vitro environment first time plants, um, tissue culture plants can um, um, experience here. What's the difference between in vitro environment and ex vitro environment? Is the first one is the carbon source. We supply carbon uh, sugar or um, sucrose or any format carbon um, 
in the tissue culture media. So plants are not required to do the photosynthesis. There is some photosynthesis happen, but it's not um, a lot. We call it for photomyxotrophic plants, both some are heterotrophic, some are um, uh, autotrophic. So in this is the case, but they are not required. They, they use their most of the energy to um, multiply. Um, it's in the ex vitro condition as soon as they arrive, they are no more uh, carbon um, supplied. So they have to do their own photosynthesis. Uh, they uptake the CO2 from the air and doing their own carbon uh, production. This is, the, uh, this is the first challenge they have to face to be uh, acclimatized in the outer environment. In vitro is the aseptic environment um, with lower light intensity and higher uh, light in intensity and higher relative humidity. Whereas in the ex vitro environment, they are, um, ex uh, they are exposed to um, outer environment, so it's not an aseptic environment anymore. Um, um, they have so they have to face these um, fungal or microbial or pathogenic um, insect and fight back. Um, higher light and light intensity is required for them to do the photosynthesis and relatively lower humidity. Um, there's the ambient humidity. So this is the environment they need to acclimatize in this stage. And from there, they go to the production facility. So let's discuss some of these uh, te uh, technique currently developed um, um, in the, in the area of plant tissue culture. So number one is somatic embryogenesis. Um, number two is artificial embryos. Number three is organogenesis, direct and indirect uh, regeneration. Um, number four is meristem culture and, num uh, and a few more. I'm going to explain a little bit um, uh, briefly. Uh, out of all of this technique, currently we in Sagrafe facilities, when the plants arrived, we do the meristem culture. From there, we do the direct uh, organogenesis. Uh, what is somatic embryogenesis? It's, it's, a, it's a somatic uh, embryo developed from vegetative cells or somatic cells. The, um, it started with globular, um, small, uh, round-shaped cells. And then from there, they go to the heart shape, uh, they go to the torpedo, and then finally the cotyledonous stage embryos. Here, they've developed the roots after this, and then they go to the uh, uh, established as independent plants. What is um, uh, um, the how the process is um, uh, done in somatic embryology? There is two different ways. One is indirect. What happened? The plant can be um, uh, induced um, uh, for callus. From the callus, um, they produce the each of the cell can produce an embryos. From there, they can develop the cotyledonous stage embryos, and then the, finally the um, um, independent plants. It could be direct embryogenesis. Um, the leaf explant um, or any other um, uh, any other like uh, stem cuttings or um, uh, cotyledonary um, uh, part or the root part can directly produce um, embryos. So uh, from the edge of the cuttings, they usually produce embryos. So one of the example I can give you here, this is on echinacea. The leaf disc produce embryos from the edges. Those are in the next picture is showing this uh, elongated and eventually produce the roots. So this is the example of root uh, somatic embryogenesis direct um, uh, um, regeneration. Um, number two is the artificial embryo. It's a really interesting technique. What is, is actually basically in somatic embryo. Uh, in the upper right corner picture, you can see the uh, it's covered with a synthetic uh, seed coat. Um, um, filled with um, um, uh, filled filled with uh, endosperm that is artificial endosperm, which uh, reserve food material is actually basically there. Um, there these reserve food materials give the longevity for the or shelf life for the embryos to uh, um, survive when they they are go out they go out of the in the field and then or in the uh, plug or anywhere they can germinate. The real somatic embryo is sitting in the middle. That's the real plants, or eventually they germinate like a, like a regular seeds. Um, the, these can be the idea of these technologies is developed. They can directly um, sow in the in the field. Um, uh, there is some limitation still exists and more uh, research uh, required to commercialize fully commercialize this technology. So next is organogenesis. There is um, uh, non, uh, this is what I'm giving you is non meristematic. What happened in explant like a leaf, which is not a meristematic tissue, um, can or or in any other explant um, can produce um, indirectly um, 
plant plants. For example, they can produce callus. From the callus, they regenerate and produce uh, plant plants. Uh, or the right side, we are showing that that uh, each explant directly can produce um, uh, shootlets, and then from the shootlets, they are um, become independent plants. So two different ways they can produce. Um, if we can produce the the callus or the uh, the of the uh, shootlets from a meristematic tissue, we call it, call it organogenesis through meristematic tissues. Um, meristematic uh, tissues, those are um, generally called as virus free. Here is some example, um, the X plant, um, which is um, produce multiple shoots, either from a leaf disc or stems or roots or anything they are developing, even root develop, shoot develop. They, these are the organogenesis. This is the direct organogenesis organogenesis um, where you can multiply the plants as soon as you receive the uh, cuttings you can multiply and and produce uh, more plants um, this is a technique where you can um, do the each plants coming you take a nodal cutting and then uh, sterile everything and you do the cuttings out of cuttings rather than multiplying um, um, multiplying in the uh, in the bunches so you can actually multiply uh, from one shoot to six, six to nine, um, uh, 36, that's how you can keep multiplying. This is one of the technique commercially using in the commercially using um, in blueberry industry. Um, millions of blueberry in lower mainland in, in British Columbia produce through this technology. However, one thing I just want to mention that we said it non meristematic but if your first plants come through the meristematic tissue, then it could be virus free again. Um, a lot of cases um, to, to uh, cut down the waiting time six to 12 months, people just start the cuttings and then multiply, which is not recommended in my view. Um, this is also a callus production through liquid culture where you can produce the callus through the liquid um, uh, uh, suspension culture, produce the solid callus culture, and then you can regenerate the plants. Um, this is another type of uh, organogenesis. So uh, the drawback if, uh, back of this um, indirect regeneration is there is a always when you go through the callus production, there is always the possibility of uh, mutation. That's why we usually um, avoid this kind of um, um, uh, regeneration procedure in our facility for, especially for cannabis industry. Um, um, so let's explain what is maize stem culture. We discussed quite a few uh, times about this, um, this technique. What is maize stem um, is the upper layer of the um, uh, plant's um, cells, like uh, tissues where uh, they are not connected with the vascular system, the like xy xylem or phloem, that's not connected. So these um, are very dome-shaped, very upper layer of the uh, tissues, their cells, their cell division is um, uh, faster than, uh, than the virus. You, as you know, the virus require a host plant to do their, to, to their multiplication um, or the reproduction. Um, however, the, they are, uh, in this region, the cell division is faster than virus can cope. So that's why they, this region is always virus free. Uh, and they are not connected with the vascular system yet uh, of the plant. So there is, even the plants is infected, they're theoretically, this part is always virus free. So that's why you always start with the maestrum culture and we can, we can get rid of um, virus, even the plants is infected. So another technique I want to explain here is microtuber, which is commercially using um, currently in, in different areas in the world. Um, so this is through tissue culture, either liquid culture, the behind, um, behind one is the bioreactor in the liquid culture or even solid culture. That's uh, the reason uh, we use the microtubers um, because it's virus free and it's, it's uh, you know, the potato is one of the um, uh, plants which is very susceptible to virus. So uh, the, these microtubers can be used as a seed and sow in the field and they can produce the plants. Um, bioreactor for um, use of bioreactor is very common in tissue culture industry nowadays um, for scaling up the multiplication phases. Different types of bioreactor has been used and currently used in, in the field of tissue culture. Temporary bi um, immersion bioreactor is very common and very popular. 
Um, this is another example of uh, commercialization of temporary bioreactor bamboo tissue culture production. About thousand plants in 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 each of this container we can produce. Um, next one is the photoautotrophic tissue culture. Um, what is photo photoautotrophic tissue culture? Is actually um, growing plants in sugar-free media. That is the growing the plants is closer to the outer environment, but still sterile, rather than free. But they are doing their own um, uh, photosynthesis or uh, or um, not depending on the sugar supply. What happened um, uh, in outer environment in the presence of light, the chlorophyll produce um, their own with uh, with the presence of sugar and water. Uh, sorry, carbon uh, CO2 and water. They produce their own. Uh, um, uh, carbon. Um, that's the technique we are using in tissue culture. The reason is if the sugar is the major source of contamination, uh, so um, to avoid sugar, by avoiding sugar, sugar actually you can scale up your uh, production, uh, which I'm going to show you in next few slides. Um, um, and the other thing is like acclimatization is faster because plant is already adopting the uptaking CO2 and producing their own own um, own uh, carbon source. So what is the difference between phototrophic and co current conventional tissue culture system is um, again the in um, current system we are um, low in CO2 we use the artificial um, uh, um, airtight system with the uh, during dark period, period because vessel is uh, airtight, is high CO2 accumulation, uh, low net photosynthetic rate as a result of uh, poor growth. Um, and the media has the sugar, so microbial contamination, there is a possibility. As a result, acclimatization, acclimatization generally have an issue. Um, what is the phototrophic system? We enrich the CO2. Um, uh, this, and then we don't add any sugar in the media. So plants are forced to uh, develop their own um, uh, carbon. So they are actually practicing their own natural way of producing their um, carbon. So um, then uh, we reduce the humidity also um, uh, and we got a functional stomata as a result, we get a higher growth and higher survival in outer environment. So. Um, by how we can enrich the CO2 with a smaller scale, we can use the filter uh, membrane um, and enrich the room with CO2, uh, higher CO2, 1000 to 2000 ppm. And then we can enrich the, um, the grow, grow uh, enrich the CO2 in, in the head space of the culture vessel and plant can uptake the CO2 from there. Uh, for exa example of uh, phototrophic tissue culture for large scale, this is an eucalyptus plant. One vessel can have about 500 plants because the chance of contamination is less. So we can actually um, um, uh, produce the larger scale, uh, scale. Um, even for the larger scale um, in that um, tissue culture with the emphasis, uh, with these, all the criteria they require for tissue culture for such as pathogen free, uh, plants production, but they can do their own carbon. We can scale up the system. We produce more plants and uh, faster acclimatization. Um, even further, uh, large larger scale um, in a septic condition, the plants can be grown um, in in a um, uh, under autotrophic condition. And coming back to now Segra, where we are using this phototrophic tissue culture, we developed a technique. Um, uh, we call it uh, 3.5 vessels um, and plants are going in a sterile um, vessel, sterile condition, a sugar free media, and those plants are, can be shipped directly uh, to our clients without um, any, uh, trans any um, uh, washing the uh, roots or anything. We just uh, transfer the, those plants, send these plants to our client with the box. So um, we call it microplug. The left side you can see. Um, so we use this for domestic shipping. Um, so plants are grown and shipped in the same box without um, any human touch. Um, um, and the vessel is designed to um, resist uh, any sh um, shipping. Uh, damage to resist any kind of damage um, um, in these um, cases. Um, also for international shipping, as we cannot ship like this, we also have this um, stage three system um, established. So either way, we can supply uh, to our clients. Um, so um, again, um, this is um, the methods we are um, using in, in our facilities for, for tissue culture. 
um, there is a lot of uh, research and development required for cannabis industry um, doing tissue culture. We are using organogenesis, one of the techniques, but there is a lot of different technology we can emphasize. And um, in future, um, in the cannabis industry, will require tissue culture and tissue culture will be the major uh, role play in, in this industry very soon.